third point, and let's go to Philippians 1, back up to Philippians 1 and verse 21, and we'll have time just for a couple more. Philippians 1, 21, third biblical perspective on persecution and suffering for believers is Philippians 1, 21 and 23. And the third point is God's word promises wonderful treasures for those who face persecution. And there are many levels. I'm just going to rattle all these off. And these are not in order of what the treasures are. But God's word says there's a wonderful treasure for those who face persecution. How about for those right now that are being killed? At the conference at Grace Community Church uh, this week, there was a pastor from Smyrna, as in the church of Smyrna from the seven churches of Revelation. He is pastoring in the city of Smyrna in Turkey. You know what he shared at the conference? There were men, pastors from 44 countries around the world there. This one from Turkey said that they've lost three of their staff members to Islamic radicals who killed them. They just were leaving church and they pulled them in an alley, (coughs) split their throat, left them to bleed to death in the alley. Three. You know, there's a high price to pay to be a believer in an Islamic country. To be a pastor, there's a higher price to pay. And look what what the wonderful treasure for those who face persecution is in Philippians 1, 21 and 23. Now, don't be shocked by this, but death brings the ultimate blessing of actually being with Jesus. I know it kind of sounds grisly to have your throat slit, and I'm not looking to have that happen anytime soon to myself or anyone else, but if it did happen like to Fred, whatever his name was, this morning at 8.15 in Marysville, Illinois, on the border of St. Louis, that was shot in the pulpit as a believer. Look what Philippians 1.21 says. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Verse 23. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Now, we all say that, and we memorize that verse. But we don't, we don't like death. Why? Because we're so earthly minded. We think that this is the best possible thing there is. We think that our family and our friends and our life and our pleasures and all the joys are so good, heaven could not be better. And that's why Paul wasn't able to share what heaven was really like because God did want us to stay here and finish our course. But the reality is, death brings the ultimate blessing of actually being with Jesus. And I hope that when each of us come to the point that we're ebbing and the circulation's declining and the respiration's declining and the heart rate's declining and the, the bodies fight against all the pathogens and all the mutinous cells of cancer or whatever is, is slowly constricting our life, that we won't act like this world is all I have and I'm not going to let go of it. But that we will act like the greats that are recorded in Scripture that says we have a better city, a heavenly city. We long to depart. We long to be clothed upon with immortality because death is the ultimate blessing. Secondly, God will finally bring justice to all unjustly harm when Jesus returns. So we don't have to, you know, the, the wonderful treasure for those that face persecution is we don't have to get back at the persecutors. That's why we're supposed to pray for them and bless them. Because God will get back at them. God is going to right all wrongs. Every unsolved mystery, every unsolved murder, every unsolved oppression, every genocide and every holocaust, every Nazi guard that that mercilessly killed Jews and, and gypsies and peasants in World War II will be brought to justice eternally. Did you know it says in, in the Gospels that one of the things about hell is they will have no rest? And Revelation says no rest night or day. You know what one of the great forms of torture is? Keeping people awake. That's why I'm torturing some of you right now. You need to go home. A couple of you are going to have a little, you need a neck brace. If you're going to be like that, you need to buy a neck brace so you can at least hold still while you sleep. But, um, but, Sleep deprivation is a torture. Do you know what hell is? People are going to not be able to rest. They're going to be constantly tormented with the memory of the murders and of the horrific 
exploitation and, and every horrible thing that they did that is never forgiven and it's just going to eat at them forever. God will finally bring justice to all unjustly harm. Persecution and affliction mature us spiritually. And here's the last verse, and we're going to go last. Go to James 1.12. Or I'll read it if you can't go there. Persecution and affliction matures us spiritually. That's what it says at the beginning of James 1. And then it says in verse 12, persecution brings us heavenly rewards. Blessed is a man, James 1.12, who endures temptation. For when he has been approved... He will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love Him. When we endure temptation, the temptation to be silent and we're not silent, the temptation to flee standing for Christ and we don't flee, the temptation to blend in with the world so we aren't different and so we don't get picked on, so we can go with the flow and, and, and have a happy, peaceful life. When we endure that affliction and when we resist the temptation to not suffer, This is what it says. He says, you will receive a crown of life. God's Word promises a wonderful treasure to those who face persecution. Now, that's only the biblical perspectives. What good does persecution do for us? Well, next time we're going to look at the most complete description. There are seven verses in succession in the Bible that tells us Exactly why God allows us to have emotional and physical afflictions. Not just people tormenting us for being a Christian, but even all the weaknesses of life, the disabilities, the hardships, the deprivations, economically, educationally, socially. Why does God allow all that? He actually explains it in His Word. And when we come back, we'll get that biblical perspective.